Good afternoon. Today for 10th of July, and this is part five of a slightly shambolic shuffle around the 2022 BMC Leyland Show here at uh, the British Motor Museum at Gaydon in Warwickshire. There might be uh, incorrect information in this video. I might fall over. There might be announcements of wind noise. I do apologise um, for all those things. It's just the way it goes with this channel, I'm afraid. This is in 1972, Austin Maxi 1750. And I actually filmed this car on sensible second-hand reviews back in March. It belongs to a friend of mine called Mr Partridge, um, who's here with some of his friends who also have Maxis. This is actually lime flower over lime flower, this car. And it is um, great. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. Um, I really enjoyed driving this, actually. The number of stickers that this car has got in the back is absolutely ridiculous. For some reason, he's not got a Lloyd Vehicle Consulting one. But, uh, you know, we'll let him off. Right next to it is this uh, Riley RM. There are some Rileys also in this row. Um, not sure which RM this is. I get confused between the, the A, B and the C. But uh, there we go. Bit of a later maxi here. This is also a 1750, but this is a... Um, 78, 79 um, and uh, yes by this stage they started to do things like removing Austin badges and all kinds of things from the cars so sometimes we're just known as the Maxi 1750 I think by this stage as well um, this will have different suspension it'll have the hydrogas in it 77, 78 Maxi here with a vinyl roof that opens that's very handy on a day like this with an opening roof Uh, number 1750. This is a Maxi 2, so they're actually really rare, the Maxi 2. They only made them for, I think, just over a year. Um, I think uh, sort of production ended in the middle of 1981, and so this would be 81 only, a uh, Maxi 2. This is an L. By this stage, the 1500 engine had been discontinued, so they all had the, the uh, 1750 uh, E series in them. Oops, some of them. Jackie Orlando Limited coming through, maybe security or something. Yeah, you can see the front end difference between the previous Maxis and the, the, the Maxi 2s that are here. Another Maxi 2, this one, a little bit of an earlier one, 80 to 81 registration. Also an L. Another Maxi 1750. Gosh, we've seen a lot of Maxi 1750s again. Um, this is actually sand glow, I think, this colour, as opposed to lime flower. Uh, similar age, 72, 73. This one's a little bit later, um, 76, 77, this one. Let's have a look at uh, some land crab whilst we're here as well, which share the same doors as a maxi. This is a very late one, actually. They're finished in 1975, and this is a 74, 75 Morris 1800, so the... So the bottom of the range, uh, as far as they go, that's the Mark III model, so's this. I don't know what um, um, year that is. I think uh, they um, sort of making the Mark III in 72, though. This is a much earlier one. Uh, this is uh, 79 to uh, 70 from Wadhams. BP, so that, uh, yeah, Chichester, yeah. Ports of registration, but Chichester's in the same area for that. Um, we don't actually be able to see the, the date on there if we look carefully. Uh, gosh, I, where is the date on that? It doesn't say. How weird. Yeah. So, yeah, so this is 970. This was the hover. Nicer version of the Landcraft, so can't remember the name of this purple colour. Um, that is very plush. Yes, the six, this is Wolsey six, it's an early Wolsey six. The 2200 actually only came out in 1972, that's 7673 plate. So I could have just looked at the engine bay to be honest, that would have also told me. Don't know why, but I think it's difficult myself. 
Anyway, um, this is a much earlier Austin 1800, it's 67, with the uh, different rear lights. There's the transverse, uh, transverse um, straight six engine. And this has the uh, transverse four cylinder, still an E series though. This is a Mark II Land Crab. You can see the Morris badge there. So much space in these, just acres and acres of space, considering the size of the car. It's an 1800S. Why don't we look at some three litres whilst we're here as well? Again, using the doors. Same doors. Austin three litres were made, I think, from 1968 to 1971. There's a very early one in an episode of The Avengers, because who was that man I saw you with? Um, and uh, I think you can tell by the quarter lights or something like that. So uh, this one, it's quite a late one actually. It says it was made in 1971, so it was one of the last um, of these three litres. This one is an auto. You can see how much longer they are than the land crabs on which they're actually based, although they're rear wheel drive and not front wheel drive. Essentially, when companies like Triumph and Jaguar started getting absorbed into what was British motor holdings, they didn't really kind of need to have an Austin badge car like this. I think they were thinking about having a Vanden Pla version of this or a wall sleeve, but it never happened. Just the Austin 3 litre was actually ever made. So this is a 6970 version. They do have quite a nice dash in them. Yes, it's very nice. It's really kind of um, perplexed though. You don't get a rough counter in one of these. I thought you would have got in a luxury car, but maybe they wanted to reserve that for sort of others. That's 6970, you see the auto badge on the back. That's gosh, a very late one, a 7172, so one of the last ones made. That is a beautiful condition, really nice. Yes, this is a really early one because it's not got quarter lights on a G. So yeah, this makes perfect sense, it's a BF68. This one's a manual. Those interior door handles clearly, <laughs> oh, they had a massive afterlife. I think the last thing they were used in was the LDV Convoy van or something in the 1990s. Another one of uh, the automatic three litres here, 6970. Likewise with this red one here. Oh, they're nice things, aren't they? They're very, very lovely cars. an auto as well. I like the coach line that these have, that's very stylish. They were made into ambulances, I mean there's one right here. Again a relatively late one of these, about 1970-71. And then just one more for good measure. You can see here, although this is a G-Reg like the other one there, this is a later car but it actually has the quarter lights, the very early ones don't have them. Yeah, another auto. Excellent. Right, let's go and look at some uh, Rover P6s. This ass looks like it's got a bit lost next to all these P6s. 1971 to 2, Rover 3500. 1974 to 5, Rover 3500. So this is a uh, 75. It's got the Continental kit on it, this one, because there's not a lot of room in the boot if you put the spare in it. Another one of these 3500 facelifts, I don't know what year this is. I've driven a uh, 2000 like this one, um, but it was an auto. Alex from Alex's Assets, who uh, has bought two cars to the show, her partner Lyndon's bought his Manji Midget, she's bought the Allegro, she has a P6 as well. And this is a really early one, it's a 64. Wow. Look at those 
sort of crazy seat belts but it did take a while getting used to this is um, just a normal 2000 manual and uh, without the reversing lights that you can see on the, uh, the later cars right, we're going to go this way I don't want to trip over all these chairs that would be bad viewers although it would be amusing for you it will not be for me 1976 to 7 Rover 3500S so this might be a manual one actually Yes, it is, so a sort of police spec type one. Very nice. Oh, and we have an Astora. Brilliant. This is a 3500 Astora. I think the company made these was, was Panel Craft in Battersea. Um, 7273 registration. 6970, this, uh, this P5, it'd be a P5B, won't it, by this stage? Yeah, it is, it's 3.5 litre. Look at that interior. Mm. Beige leather interior with wood. <sighs> do like a nice beige leather interior, viewers? Of course I do. Yeah, that is the 3.5 cubic yeah, yeah, yeah. Hooper. Just Let's have a look at some 800s whilst we're here. Is. 1999 Rover 825 with the early KV6 engine. I wonder if it's the Sterling viewers, in which case I will be very, very happy. But yes, it is. And here's the Vitesse 1998. Yes, please, viewers. We're definitely in the rights of territory now, aren't we? Some very tasty treats to do. Mm, someone's very proud of their very, very, very clean engine. So this will be uh, M series, I think, in this car. Yes, it's Rover 20 SI will be M series. Oh, viewers, Rover 800 coupe. Eh? Oh, viewers, ninety. 293 registration. These were hand finished, these cars. And yes, it's got a brief leather interior. I do like a nice beige leather interior, viewers. This one appears to have the 2.7 Honda V6 in it. Yes, please, viewers. More tasty 800s here. Rover approved, yes, approved by me too. Very, very much so. Mm. <laughs> yes. And to Sterling. Mm. 827 SLI with a Nokia Matrix phone. Oh, viewers, you can be Keanu Reeves in the Matrix. 827 SLI is not too far off a Sterling in terms of spec, is it? Just because it's got a cloth interior. Yep, same 2.7 litre Honda V6 engine. It's a very late one, actually, this. On, on a J, it was a 91 only, it would be, because uh, I think the um, face, face of R17 came in for the uh, 1992 model year. That's a 1991 at Sterling. Another. 800 coupe. Mm, 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 mm. Yes, please. Oh, viewers. Definitely in the right place today, aren't we? Mm, that's a Vitesse. Personal plate, but the, it's actually about the right era, 90, 97, 98, something like that. And now it's time for some Tomcats. So this is a late one here. I think this will be... Um, the uh, 1.8 VVC engine in it, it's a 98.99 plate. This one's right on the cusp, but it has the later dash in it, so I'm going to say this is probably, uh, again, either a 216 or a 218. Yeah, 95.96 registration. Again, this one will probably be uh, 1.8 VVC K series, 97. 98 plate. Again, I forget the name of this colour. Same deal here. Same, same kind of, uh, same kind of um, 
engineering is probably probably a 1.8 um, VVCK series. I have driven one of these actually. I think I've driven two. I've driven an early one and a late one. The early one is Mr. Richardson's and Furious Driving, which is just a 220 coupe. The later one is actually called a Rover 1.6 coupe. I think it's a 98, owned by Mr. Chris James, who still has it, I think. Um, so I've driven, driven the 1.6 and the 2 litre. Where the earlier 1.6s were a Honda engine, uh, the ones after 95 were a K series. This one, I honestly don't know. Could be either, I suppose. Uh, again, same same year on an S, 98, 99. Oh, this is a similar colour to Miss Richardson's one, actually. This, but yeah, it's 97, 98 registration. All these sort of part leather seats. Ah, oh, now this, this is what they looked like when it came out. It came out uh, late 1992. Uh, so this is one of the first, 92, 93 registration. I don't know if this is the uh, 220 or 220 turbo, so it's, a, it's quite an early one. I think we've got an airbag, so yeah, very early one. So if we're heading down to look at those in a sec, but first of all, we've got some more Tomcats, including an FDH one. This is an early dash one, so maybe like a 220, something like that, full leather interior, maybe a 220 turbo I suppose. I don't know why they didn't badge for them, I think you can tell by the wheel, but this has wheels off a, I think those are off a facelifted 45 actually, like the one that I had, though some pre-facelift 45 did also use them, and some 25s. FDH uh, Tomcats were a, a cancelled order I think from Japan, they went out to the docks and either like got halfway there or uh, sort of uh, didn't didn't even make it that far and had to come back and these were all fitted with aircon it has a very rare aircon and a base over interior which we do like um, but then they were sold through um i think it was either one or just a, a small handful of dealerships but paul rigby i think was the last dealership on the lombridge site actually it's interesting to see if you plates from there and then we have a vast number of 200 BRMs, which uh, we do like viewers. These have really got up in value recently. They were all um, made, I think, between 1998 and early 2000, I think, when the last one was registered. They have wheels that are very similar to the later MG Rover Rira Cosmos wheels, but they are actually unique to the BRM. This is the first car to use them. These on these will be 1990 to 2000. Um, they've all got this sort of red leather interior in them, like that and the steering wheel and things, they look very smart. They were criminally undervalued for years, but they are sort of, um, you know, rising now. That sort of red dial kit would be non-standard, actually. <laughs> There's the uh, some nice mats in there and the uh, like an aluminium gear knob. It's all with the 1.8 K-Series VBC engine and a little sort of orange scoop there like the old BRM racing cars had. Judging by today, if you're seeing all these, you'd think the survival rate is quite high, but I'm not actually sure that it is. See here, this is one of the press cars, actually, as far as I know. Um, SW, SWOM, there we go, SD3. Yeah, there we go. It was actually built in, in 1998 to, to be used as press. And I was right then, for once. Very good viewers. I do like this sort of thing. Maybe I should uh, see if I can have a go in one of these at some point. So I do need someone to offer me one to be able to do that. Yes, twin cam, 16 valve. This is a Portsmouth area one. PO. Portsmouth rotation is actually quite big. It, re it goes all the way over to almost Bournemouth and then all the way up to sort of north of Winchester. So it's uh, then over to Chichester. So it's a big area. Lots and lots and lots of <laughs> late classic minis. This is a really late one in a 51 plate, although production did finish in uh, the year 2000. Even though that's a sort of late 2000 registration, there were ones I think kept back. So it's a 1998 one. That's again a, a 2001 plate. So a Cooper Sports. Cooper Sports, actually a very personal plate then. Cooper Sports were only made right at the end. Um, so there's, there's loads here. 
They should really be on things like V and W plates, but obviously we've got ones even later on here. I didn't realise that they were kind of made in, in, in this colour, but this is a nitro special edition, so it's not perhaps one. This is like a sort of, maybe like a sort of more like she always made for. Gosh, it's an auto, wow. That's a good BM, it's a BMW stereo in there as well. That'd be one of the sort of last automatic minis made. Gosh, there's another one here. And they've both got beige leather interiors with wood viewers. I do like a nice beige leather interior. And those stalks are off a Rover 200, actually. So they really changed uh, a lot of bits of this final iteration of the classic Mini, which is known as the Mark 7 Mini. Right, move on to the next section. So there's an MTF here. This is an early one. Um, just by that plate, I'd say it's an early VVC with a 143 brake horsepower engine. The trophies near the end of production did get the 160. Very similar to the Rector TF, of course, but there are some differences. Ooh, I think I know who this car belongs to. It belongs to a gentleman who called... Uh, Larry, as far as I know, and this has just been painted. Look at how beautiful that is. It's always at Pride of Longbridge, actually. Um, I think it's a 2002, could be 2003. There we go. Hello to Larry, who is a bit, a bit busy today. ZT and a, a 75. I'm going to have to be careful with both of these views because some of the engines which we can't talk. Yes, yeah, so I'm sure way of telling on these is to look at the uh, rev counter. This one is a petrol. It's probably um, probably a K, a K series then in that case. Blame the mayor of London viewers for all this. Uh, this we can't talk about diesels on this channel because he has made it so that we can't. Most disagreeable. This is the uh, Wolsey Saloon prototype. Um, they were just called a Wolsey Saloon. Very very limited production run about six months before they then became the princess. This car I think was registered in 1974, although production of these started I think early 75. So yeah, pre-production, anoraks only. I don't have an anorak, but uh, I am somewhat of a, an excited person when it comes to it comes to these. Yeah, there you go, registered July 74, March was, the launch was March 75. Um, so there we go, this is what the pre-production Wolseley Saloon looks like. Certainly it was just, it, I think it it was marked as Wolseley Saloon, or maybe just a Wolseley. You can see it doesn't say anything on the back of the Wolseley Automatic. And then they had a major change of heart in about sort of September uh, 75 and changed all of them to this princess. No Austin or Morris badges. Just a princess in 1.8 and 2.2 litre forms. Later cars, of course, got uh, the uh, 1.7 and 2 litre engines, and then they they uh, sort of morphed into this Ambassador. I really like Ambassador for some reason, viewers. They're exceptionally rare. I think the production run was just under two years for these, and they got what the cars should have got from the um, from launch: a hatchback. But they did downgrade some of the trim in them, even though this is a relatively high spec one, a two litre HL. I'm going to get a rev counter in here, for example. There isn't one, which is a bit of a disappointment, really. I think they did make some Vanden Pla ambassadors, but not very many. So we're now on to um, just the normal princesses here. This is a very late one, actually. Um, this is just before they started making the ambassador. So um, this is an 81, 82 car. Princess 2, 2.2 HLS, so right at the top. And this is uh, an earlier Princess 2, because it's a 2200, so you can see there's a bit of difference, even though these cars are very, very similar. And they're both automatic, actually. It's the same uh, 2.2 um, E-Series transverse engine that was also used in the War 6. So that's a, um, a W, so the uh, A281. Princess 2000 HLS 72, sort of 79 to 80. Actually, you can tell I've been doing a lot of these parts already, can't you, viewers? 
that's what happens. I start sort of mumbling, getting things wrong to myself. Ooh, another Riley Elf. Very late one, actually. It's a Mark III, again with the sort of wind-up windows and the later door handles. Riley was discontinued as a Mark in 1969. So, yes, very late. 60 registration. Another Maxi here. Not a lot of Maxis here today, but um, certainly the ones that are here I appreciate. So I think they've got some more over there, so that's nice. Another 1750. This, I think, is an Austin Healy Sprite. I think they stopped making these about 71. So quite a late one. This is a 6970 plate. This one, however, is not. Um, that's not a Sprite. Uh, it's a very late midget actually. This would have originally been a rubber bumper midget, but it's been sort of altered to look a little bit like um, this um, Austin Sprite Works car. Right, let's uh, move to another part of the show. Interesting here, this is a Triumph TR250. That's what the TR5s were called in the United States of America. Plate matches up perfectly, 67, 68 plate on carbs rather than uh, fuel injection for these uh, TR250s and as you can see it's left hand drive it's also for sale um, and as uh, Mr Bill from the fuel power channels would say this could be yours 1972-73 um, MG Midget Nineteen. 71 to 2 TR6 with overdrive. Nineteen eighty to eighty one Triumph TR seven on the convertible. Nineteen seventy four to five MGB GT. There's those interior door handles again, viewers. They pop up everywhere. Right on the cusp of rubber bumper, though. So I don't know if this is this is actually uh, a conversion or maybe I mean, it could be original crow bumper. It's right on the edge of it. This Mini Sprite I just see everywhere. It's a late Mark VI Mini, I think it's a 1995. You tell it's a Mark VI because the Mark VII, which came in sort of right at the end of 95, would have an airbag. This one doesn't. But yeah, most of the Minis by this stage were there for Coopers, I think. Earlier Mini here. Um, I think this makes it a Mark IV Mini. A B registration, so 84, 85. This one, yeah, it's this one's been aged a bit. This is a 1999 plate, actually. Um, so it probably started life as a Cooper. Um, what it's based on, it's supposed to be a Cooper S. Mm, yeah, it's 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 not, unfortunately. Um, be a lot more valuable than it is, but that's quite a good replica, actually. If you didn't know registrations, then you'd obviously get caught out. This. Um, Rover V8S, um, which is, I think, a late pre-facelift one. It's similar in age to this one. Uh, this gets everywhere as well. I thought we'd probably see this at the BMC Leyland Show, um, which will be um, back in uh, the autumn, in September, which we'll be attending as well. So, yeah, 7980, this uh, V8S. That one's probably about the same era. MGZTT here, let us just see if we could talk about it. No, move on. Yes, blame the Mayor of London and his friends for introducing all these ultra low emission zones and clean air zones. This one's fine, this is a petrol. Oh, it's a ZTT 260 as well. <laughs> it's not just any, it's the V8 version. <laughs> Gosh, those are rare. Seriously rare, particularly in pre facelift like this. So, uh, TF85, this is a continuation car. This was made under Nanjing Automotive at uh, Longbridge from the kit um, between 2009 and 2010. They were 
very, very slow sellers. Uh, there are only two types available under the continuation cars, the LE500 and uh, this, 80, this 85. So it's very true to see one of those. That's an early MG 1100. That's a very early one. Yeah, it's got no mark badge to back or anything. And you can see the Motor Corporation, eh? That's interesting. This is a Mark II Radio 16. It's an Austin 1300, 1967 68 registration. That's a nice colour. Ooh. Very late, Rover 25. This, I think, is probably a GSI. And yes, it's got a beige leather interior, viewers. I do like a nice a beige leather interior. It's very, very nice. And so is this nice Trovandum Pla. Uh, contrast to that, this is a really early one. This will be in 1983 only. It's a, it's a manual Van den Pla with the talking dash. I think this is probably the earliest um, Maestro Van den Pla that's out there. Very, very early one. I have actually driven one of these in a Porto Red like this on the channel on No Budget Reviews in October 2020. 1982 um, Austin Mini Metro 1.3 Auto. I have driven a, a Mini Metro of this era, but it was actually a, a manual, it's a Vanden Plan manual, um, also on a Y. That's the Central Second Hand Classics. That was about a year ago. 1989 to 90 MG Metro 1300. My godfather had one of these with the red seatbelts and things, but his one, his one was, a, was a red one, like this Metro GTA. I never quite understood why they marketed both an MG Metro and a Metro GTA. I don't really understand that. Maybe somebody um, in the comment section will enlighten me as to, as to why they did that. I think they both actually used the same wheels by this stage, these sort of lattice ones. Which are very nice. Yeah, both the same here, 8990. We've got a mini sidewalk edition here, um, probably to sort of uh, use up maybe the body shells of the, of the late sort of Mark 5s, perhaps. And then uh, this one here, 1969 to 70 registration, but I don't actually know if this is um, that age. It's probably a bit newer. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and leave a comment below.